Hello, I'm Alistair Frew, and I'm a partner in the commercial property practice at Lodders Solicitors. Over the last few days and weeks, we've been issuing bite-sized business briefings, explaining how the legal world is changing following the outbreak of the coronavirus. This impacts also heavily on the landlord and tenant world. And this is our first webinar to discuss the issues further. Landlords are continuing to be entitled to receive their rent. Tenants must continue to pay it, but often they simply can't. If a landlord demands payment and the tenant can't pay, is it a case of can't pay or is it won't pay? Some tenant businesses are booming at the moment, but many tenants are really struggling. Some landlords want a long-term relationship with their tenants. Others, it's just a short-term cash thing. And if the tenant can't pay, the tenant's got to go. But the Coronavirus Act 2020, which was brought into force a few days ago, has suspended the right for landlords to forfeit leases for the non-payment of rent until the date of 30th June 2020, although that date may change. Also, landlords are no longer allowed to hold against the tenant the fact that rent hasn't been paid in a renewal under the Landlord and Tenant Act 1954. So at the moment, tenants are being given some protection. Landlords must talk to their tenants in order to agree the way forward when the lockdown period comes to an end. And many landlords are already agreeing with their tenants for rents to be deferred. The rent remains due, but it's not currently being paid. What is that relationship going to be? Is the rent waived, written off, struck off the ledger altogether? Or does it just build up to be paid on another day? This is really important because when the lockdown comes to an end and the next rent date happens, landlords will be entitled to forfeit the lease for the unpaid arrears, although it is possible that further legislation will come in to change that. We don't know. Stepping aside from the direct relationship between landlord and tenant, the Coronavirus Act also introduces the deferral of VAT payment due to HM Revenue and Customs, and a 12-month abolition of business rates for businesses which occupy relatively low-value premises. And in addition, certain businesses can apply to their local councils for grant funding under the new retail and hospitality scheme. All put together, this is intended to free up vital cash to allow tenants to carry on trading and to allow tenants to carry on paying their rent. The Act does contain certain protections for landlords in the event that they inadvertently waive a rent payment or waive a breach of the lease. But let's not rely upon emergency legislation. Let's get it documented properly. Landlord and tenant, what have you agreed? What is the new regime? How long does it last for? And what will it look like when the lockdown comes to an end? But in the meantime, landlords still own buildings. Those buildings need to be insured. Those buildings need to be maintained. If a roof tile slips, it needs to be put back on. If a drain becomes blocked, it needs to be unblocked. If you have a water system, it needs to be kept free from Legionnaire's disease. All of this work has to happen, whether the service charge is paid or not. Other services, possibly less important. You need to decide between landlord and tenant, what are the important services, what services the tenant is gonna pay for, and what services you just have to provide as landlord regardless of whether or not service charge is paid. But realistically, many parties will be entering into a new relationship. A lot of tenant companies will go bust in the coming weeks and months. The tenant business may continue phoenixed out of the ashes. So what impact does that have on your lease? If a landlord and tenant are in a relationship and the tenant ceases to exist, does the landlord accept the phoenix company Without question, what about the guarantors who signed the original lease? What's going to happen to them? What will the new relationship look like? Now may not be the moment to make those decisions, but the moment will come. And it's best to think about it sooner. A tenant company may have been driven into insolvency, but the business may still have some cash. Now is the time to think about that. 
Conversely, some landlords will say, oh, look, now is the time to bring this to a head, to end this relationship. The Coronavirus Act prevents the forfeiture of the lease, but it doesn't prevent uh, an attempt by the landlord to wind up the tenant business for non-payment of debt. Some landlords will try this. It's, a, it's, a, it's the nuclear bomb option, but it will flush out a wealthy tenant that's hoarding its cash and paying other suppliers without paying the landlord. Formal remedies are all very important, but the most important thing is that landlord and tenant talk to each other. They talk to us, they talk to their advisors to come up with an honest and realistic approach for what the world is going to do to them now and what the world will look like when the lockdown is brought to an end. Thank you.